In this video, we're gonna be continuing on with our weather derivative series, and here we'll be actually using our modified ullenstein ullenbeck process to simulate temperature paths. This is going to be under the physical probability measure uh, of which we've estimated our market parameters for this OH uh, process. So now that we've got our volatility model, we're going to be using the S spline for a given a particular day within the year, we've got non-constant volatility. So we're going to be incorporating that in our model. So without further ado, let's get into it. So just a recap of what we're doing in this series, we're going to go through a quick summary on the weather to derivative contract features. So the aim is with that we want to price a temperature option and then the underlying is either heating degree days or cooling degree days index over a given period of time. So the underlying of a temperature option is this heating degree day, cooling degree day, and it, the approximation of average temperature in reference to a base or reference temperature. So for daily average temperature, really it's just a proxy. So you take the T max and you add the T min and you take the average of these two temperatures. So our underlying is daily average temperature as per this approximation. Our degree days for any given day um, in period and periods, we have the heating degree uh, day for a given uh, day n is equal to the temperature ref minus the T temperature of that day. So the daily average temperature and the max function. So it's either if this is above zero, then it's this value or it's zero. So then we have um, for a cooling degree day, we've got the temperature, the daily average temperature minus the T ref. And of course, if that's positive, you take that value or um, it's zero otherwise. So the payoff function here, the buyer of an option will receive an amount where we have uh, estimated as epsilon here equals a function that you can define of these heating degree or cooling degree days. So the degree days um, is equal to either HN for heating degree seasons or uh, CN for cooling degree seasons. So this is just the summation of the heating degree days and the cooling degree days for the entire region um, that you're investigating, the entire period. So the typical seasons for OTC is uh, the 15th of May to the 15th of September for cooling degree seasons or the 15th of December to the 15th of March for heating degree seasons if you're in the US. Popular payoff functions, we've got a call with a cap. So here we have this uh, minimum between the cap or this payoff function here. And you'll note that the payoff function has our degree days minus uh, the strike for the call. And it's the max of that. Um, so it's either that value or zero, depending if this is positive or negative. And then we've got this pay rate alpha. So this is like the tick value per degree day. And this is often either 2,500 or 5,000 US dollars. So now that we've gone through that quick summary, let's go into the temperature modeling. So everything that we have done so far in this series has been under the physical probability measure P, including, including and especially the parameter estimation, estimation of the following model. So if you remember, we have our uh, max temp and our min temp data frames of which we've manipulated to get our daily average temperature. So if we just print that out, then you see that we get this uh, data frame where we just have temperatures for a given day since 1859, January the 1st. So our modified mean reverting ornstein ullenbeck process, here we've actually modeled and defined our parameters. So we've got this mean reverting process as per temperature, and we have a um, daily average temperature denoted by this T bar. Now T bar we've actually defined as this um, sinusoidal model, um, a Fourier series of, of uh, order one, and we've been able to manipulate it so that we actually have it just in terms of the sine function. We've defined these parameters with omega being the period uh, two pi over 365.25. And the 0.25 is important because we have such a large period of data that it does matter about leap years. So we've got our function for the average temperature for a given period, and then we need the, uh, the first differential of this T bar. And that can just be taken by uh, the derivative with respect to time of this function T bar. 
Now it's important to note here that t is actually um, the first ordinal number zero on the date the 1st of January 1859. So now if we just show you what that model looks like, we've got our t model defined here with all our parameters and we've got our dt model, so our derivative of uh, t bar here. And here I've got my t bar params in this, uh, uh, this list here. Now if I fit this model uh, across my data now um, and then I actually pass through that, uh, those t-bar parameters into our t-model, then we can actually print out that and see the model fit. So here this model is our t-bar, the average daily temperature, as we go through for each particular day. Now, if you remember, we noticed that variance was non-constant throughout these periods. Here in the peaks of summer and the lows of winter, we have more spread around our data. So that's why volatility is non-constant within seasons. So to come up with, come around that, we had a volatility of temperature process, and that was estimated on the based on quadratic variation. So sigma squared of our temperature process t, uh, t, t for a given day. So here our volatility estimator is denoted by this formula here based on quadratic variation. So our standard deviation of our temperature process, we then need to fit some kind of model to this. Now for this particular model, I've chosen to use a spline with five knots. And if you don't know why we chose that, please go through uh, the previous video where we looked at different volatility models um, to, to try and estimate this volatility, either given days or using the first ordinal number from 1859, January 1st. So here I've just printed out what that looks like for each day in the year. Uh, we see we've got non-constant volatility and we've just done a spline fit with five knots and it kind of looks like a polynomial there. So now that we have our volatility and our uh, SDE defined in our model, what we want to do is simulate our temperature paths. Now the way we're gonna have to do this is we need to break apart our SDE, our modified um, ornstein ullenbeck process using a Euler scheme approximation. So here, um, just using finite differences, we've taken that the next temperature step is equal to the current temperature plus the derivative of T bar plus by kappa, which is that mean reversion constant that we've estimated, um, times by the difference between T bar minus the previous temperature plus our sigma, uh, which is our standard deviation, our volatility metric, times by uh, a normal distribution. Uh, error term, so that's zi. So what I can do is I can just define this exact function using um, a Python function called Euler underscore step. Here, this is going to be a pandas function, so I'm going to import for every row in our data frame. I need parameters kappa and then the number of simulations that we're doing. Here I'm just going to export temperature, which is going to be the simulated next day temperature. So because I need the previous temperature, uh, T bar, in this series, I'm going to need to check if there is a previous uh, temperature series. So if there is not, um, if the T bar shift that I'm going to define below is not equal to um, Na, then I need to define that my initial temperature is T bar. You can just set the initial temperature to whatever you want in the series, you could assign it randomly, but I've just said that it's the um, average temperature at the start of the period. Otherwise, we're going to define our current temperature as the previous temperature, um, average temperature series. So our T deterministic component is going to be our TI, our previous temperature, plus our derivative of temperature. Here we've got our mean reverting term, so T underscore M rev for mean reverting, and that's just kappa times by this row T bar, so our average daily temperature minus the temperature. So here we've got sigma, which is going to be our variable component, which is our volatility for a particular day, multiplied by the normal distributed um, variable. So our Monte Carlo simulation. Here we've defined quite a large function where we're going to take in the trading days, which is just going to be a pandas date time index of which we're interested in um, c computing our, uh, our simulation over from start to end dates. We've got our t-bar params that we're passing in for our actual temperature model. We've got our volatility model that we've defined. 
So this is gonna be a fitted volatility model for each day in the year. We've got our first ordinal process, which is going to be um, needed for our T-bar model. And then we've got um, a, the default of the number of simulations, which is going to be equal to one, and then our kappa, which again, the default is the estimated parameter that we have chosen. And again, kappa, which is going to be our default of the estimated parameter that we've estimated in previous videos for under the physical probability measure. So the steps here is that we're gonna check the trading date series and is it a date time index? If yes, we're going to map this to an ordinal number because that's what we need for our model. Now we're going to use the modified ornstein ornbeck process with the estimated parameters to simulate our T-bar uh, daily average temperature. And then we're going to use the derivative of the modified uh, ornstein ornbeck process to calculate the change of T-bar. Once we've got those two columns, we can create a data frame with this information. And then we're going to actually extract which day of the year it is um, from our index. So we'll take our data series index um, with our ordinal numbers and we'll get the day of the year. Once we've done that, we can apply the B spline for our volatility model based on the day, um, the season of the year. So we're going to get a column with our volatility for each individual day. Then we're going to take a shift of the T-bar by one day. So this is the lagged T-bar series and we need this so we can create our Euler step. Now we can apply that Euler step pandas function that we created above by just passing our Euler step function and the arguments that we've defined in this function. So kappa and then m. Now we create the final data frame for all simulations and this is just where we pass out the information that we've calculated. I'm going to return two data frames. One is gonna be the temperature with all those individual components, T-bar, T-bar shift, the days, the volatility, and then one is our end simulations for um, M number of simulations for each column. So I've just spoken through all that code, but let's actually take a look at what that looks like. So the simulation of temperature, here we finally simulate the temperature under the physical probability measure. We're defining our date range and the number of simulations. So here we've got number of sims equals five, and then our trading dates that we're interested in is from the 1st of September, 2022, all the way to 2032, um, August 31st. So the frequency is gonna be days, and here I'm just uh, calling that Monte Carlo temperature function that we defined, and then I'm extracting um, the Monte Carlo temps, and then the Monte Carlo sims. So the Monte Carlo temps data frame is the individual components used to simulate temperature paths in this simulation. And here's what it looks like. We've got T bar, which is the average daily temperature for a given day. We've got our DT bar, which is the change in that daily bar temperature. And remember, we've used the derivative of that modified ullenstein ullenbeck process to calculate this. And then we've got our uh, respective day that we've calculated from our ordinal index. And then we've got the volatility uh, using our B spline model. Now I've created this B bar shift because remember we need the lagged um, actual T bar to be able to calculate the next temperature. So once we've done that, for each individual simulated path, we can then get our uh, respective column for that temperature series. So here I've got five simulations, uh, one through to five uh, for our temperature series for the given date time index. So what does that look like? Let's plot um, using matplotlib for an individual simulation. Here what I've done in blue, I've got just that simulation number one, the first simulation, and then I'm plotting T bar from our MC temps. So you can see uh, what the average daily temperature was and where the variation is. And here you can see that it's very constant, uh, consistent, sorry, um, with our actual data. Now what you might want to do is actually validate your model and that it holds with your estimated parameter given your real world data. You could do this in any way. You could have kept um, some out of sample data that you didn't estimate your parameters on and then cross reference or you some kind of um, root mean squared error or, or the like to be able to validate your model. I'm not gonna do that here because uh, our focus is on actually valuing weather derivatives. 
Now, one final comment I'll make here is that the temperature distributions are often important to look at. And I wanted to show you the difference between our Monte Carlo simulation temperature and distributions of the peaks of summer versus the peaks of winter. So here in Australia, um, we've got uh, 10,000 temperatures on the 1st of July uh, 2023, which is for winter. And then we've got our peak of summer, which is the 1st of January uh, 2023. You can debate whether those are the peaks or not uh, if you're from Australia, but who cares? They're, they're really the peaks of winter and, uh, and summer. So what we expect is to see quite different um, aspects of volatility uh, between these two periods. So we're simulating 10,000 uh, different uh, temperatures all on the same day. So if we plot that out and we also include the T bar for summer and winter, we can see the difference between these distributions. And you can see that the actual standard deviation around these T bars um, in these histograms are quite different between winter and summer. So now that we've actually learned how you can uh, perform this uh, Monte Carlo simulation using our modified ornstein ullenbeck process under the physical probability measure. Now we're going to go ahead in the next video and actually use this alter it for risk neutral pricing approach under the Q measure and then be able to price our weather derivatives. So as always, thank you very much for listening and I'll see you guys in the next one.